few years ago I walked from Edinburgh to Craigmiller Castle, through the old railway tunnel, under Samson's ribs and Arthur's seat, and through the charming village of Duddingston with its loch. Between there and the castle, I chanced upon a group of big old buildings. I'm fond of big old buildings, and so stopped to do a bit of exploring. It looked like a brewery, an intact Victorian brewery, but whose? And that's when I spotted the big letters on the wall. Welcome to Dryborough's Duddingston Brewery. The Dryborough family were brewing in Edinburgh from the 18th century at various locations. Due to railway development near their Craig End Brewery, in 1892 they moved here and built this brewery. Well, there aren't really that many of those letters spelling out the name Dryborough left. One or two of them still clinging on for dear life. It's just nice to see them there. I strongly suspect that they date to the very beginning of the, the brewery here. When Dryborough moved here and constructed this brewery, at that time there was only one other brewery in the area and that was William Murray's Craig Miller Brewery located on the other side of the road. And before that, just a few years before then, this was just all green fields with a, a railway line running through it. But by 1901, just nine years after Dryborough made the move here, there was six, sorry, there were seven large breweries in this fairly small area of land and Duddingston had become a major centre for the brewing of Scottish ale. In 
the following series of Ordnance Survey maps, you can see how the area grew from green fields to become a veritable hive of industry. In 1893, just one year after Dryborough's move, you can see their brewery and the Craig Miller Brewery on the opposite side of the road. This 1906 map shows all seven breweries in situ. Running clockwise, we have the North British Brewery, then Dryborough's, just called a brewery on this map, the Duddingston Brewery on the other side of the railway line, the Pentland Brewery, then over the road to the Craig Miller Brewery, the Castle Brewery, and one just called a brewery. A later 1932 map gives the same detail with a little additional colour. Some of these breweries changed hands a number of times over the years. The brewing industry, like many industries, was full of takeovers and ultimately closures. You don't generally take a rival over because you like their wares. You take them over to shut them down. John Somerville and Company, for example, had the North British Brewery, but they were taken over by William Murray in 1922. In 1950, Murray then closed their Craig Miller Brewery, which may then have been used by drivers. Murray was taken over by Northern Breweries, and brewing seized at the North British Brewery in 1963. So it's a complicated picture, full of takeovers and closures. This aerial photo dates to 1929, seven years after Murray took over the North British Brewery, which you can see in the bottom left. You can also see Dryborough's Brewery, Robert Ducher's Brewery, the Pentland Brewery, Craig Miller Brewery, and McLachlan's Castle Brewery, later acquired by tenants. If we superimpose a still from Google Earth over an 1893 Ordnance Survey map, we can see that the footprint of the original Victorian brewery still exists today.
Dryborough's was taken over by Watney Mann in 1965 and then sold on again in 1987 and closed. That's almost exactly a hundred years of uh, existence down the pan. Um, it's the only brewery that is left, or it's the only complete Victorian brewery left in this uh, area. As I said earlier, once had seven large breweries. They've all gone. And I think we need to really think quite uh, long and hard about what exactly we're going to do with this site. There are plans afoot to turn the whole brewery into housing. And of the mock-up and illustrations that I've seen, they do seem to be retaining uh, a fair number of the buildings uh, that, that are part of the brewery. But you know, although there'll be frontages and walls that will be saved and it may look kind of similar to how it looks now, nevertheless we are at the end of the day going to be losing probably one of the very few complete Victorian breweries that are left in Scotland. Do we really want to lose that? You know, if ever uh, a group of uh, buildings and a part of our industrial heritage were crying out to be saved in their entirety, this is it. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now. Well, for some bizarre reason, I thought I might end the video with a pint of Jukers. But, you know, I could you can still get Jukers. Um, but I could have been wandering around all over Edinburgh trying to find a pub that uh, still sold it. So I, I settled for a, a, a beer in Bannermans near the top of Lothian Road. And I'm in the snug. And uh, it does what it says in the tin. It's just lo lovely and snug. I mean, Jukers wasn't brewed, as a beer, it wasn't brewed by dry brewers, but if you remember from some of the maps and I think one of the aerial photographs I showed you, Jukers was another side of the railway line from dry brewers brewery and just a huge brewery, one of the seven in that small area of Duddingston that's gone. And I, I remember one time, I mean obviously I don't know what the Dukers was like when it was first brewed or you know mid 20th century even, um, but I do remember Dukers, I can't remember exactly when it would have been, 1980s maybe I'm guessing when it was an award-winning beer. I don't think it wasn't brewed by Dukers at that point. I don't know who brewed it. Caledonian Brewery, possibly. Um, 
and it was a, a, a really nice beer, sort of light and very refreshing. But um, in the, the years that followed, I don't know what happened there. Um, it just, I found it on far too many occasions when you went into a pub for a pint of Jokers, it was not, not at its best. It was just, I don't know if it'd be lying too long or something. It just, on, on too many occasions, it was not in the best of condition. And uh, I just uh, went off the idea of even asking for it. And you know, some of these beers, um, there's quite a few beers that we can buy these days that are that have the name of an old brewery attached to them. But uh, they're not brewed by that the brewery. The brewery's no longer there. And um, there's something quite sad about that, to be honest. You know, you're drinking a beer that has a name from the past, and uh, it will probably taste nothing like it originally tasted. It's not brewed in the original place. You know. Yeah. When I finished filming at the Dryborough Brewery, I popped across the road to a, a corner pub. I can't remember the name of it. It's a pub directly opposite the brewery. And um, I, I just had a tomato juice. It was very quiet inside. There was only two other customers. And it was just very, very quiet. And I imagine it's such a contrast because when all seven breweries were in operation, that pub would have been absolutely heaving. There must literally have been hundreds of brewery workers in there after their shift, uh, knocking back beer. Or maybe it's the case when you work with beer all day, you've seen quite enough of it and you would perhaps rather not have a <laughs> another beer. I don't know. I just I imagine it was probably absolutely... Um, chopped to the gunnels um, with customers. Very sad how things have changed. All the breweries have gone with the exception of Driver's, which isn't a brewery. And that pub, which must have um, had a lot of business, is, um, perhaps like a lot of pubs, it's struggling these days. So. And as I think I said earlier, I would. There's a part of me would just love to see that old brewery transformed into a major visitor attraction. Because you know, I, I think I may have said already. I'm not sure that I, I cannot think of one major tourist attraction in Scotland that deals with the history and the heritage of the Scottish brewing industry. I was just having a chat there to one of the guys here and you know, a lot of tourist stuff in this country is to do with whiskey and such like. Now, it, it may well be the case that there is a major brewing centre and I just can't think of it. If you can think of a major tourist attraction that is concerned with Scottish beer, then drop me a comment. I don't think there is one and I think the country needs one. And I can't think of a better location than that old brewery site. Driver's Brewery. I've already said my closing spiel, so you already know who I am, and I'll see you again.